All right, legends, welcome to Here's Rodder's Reviews, and we're getting into a little bit more of the Transformers Generation 1. This episode is The Revenge of Bruticus, and this is literally the second part of Starscream's Brigade. And uh, this could almost have been, although I can see why they didn't package it as a two-parter. Um, each episode is, stands on its own, but it is a continuation from Starscream's Brigade. And... Uh, Yes, it picks up fairly much, well, shortly after the events of Starscream's Brigade and Starscream and the Combaticons, who he created in the previous episode, to try and topple the leadership of the Decepticons and take over from Megatron. They get defeated by Megatron at the end of that episode and they're banished to uh, an asteroid and uh, they're there. They're trapped. They're in a timeout, pretty much. And Starscream gets fed up with this galactic prison that they're in. So he transforms to jet mode, flies off the asteroid, and they, the Compaticons, and they're bickering with each other and whatnot. And this drives Starscream to leave them on their own. And uh, yes, completely unfazed by this. Onslaught, he has developed a plan of revenge and blast off Onslaught and blast off there too, the, com the Combaticons. Blast off has the the asteroid attached to him and he's he's a space shuttle in his vehicle form and he's towing the asteroid towards Cybertron. Uh, they get there and uh, when they arrive, Shockwave, he's, he's been holding these uh, tests for his Sentinel droids. We're using this uh, computer to project these images into space. And uh, um, they're using this for target practice. And uh, of course the Combaticons arrive and the battle commences against the, the Combaticons and these Sentinels controlled by shockwave but uh Bruticus pretty much Bruticus is a combined form of the Combaticons uh pretty much short order takes him out um so their operation revenge has begun uh back on earth Megatron he's overseeing this m massive insecticon army uh, they're destroying this city, and for once he's pretty much using whatever energy on he's getting at this point to generate more Insecticons. Instead of just saving the energy the way he normally does, he's creating a bigger army of the Insecticons. And one of the things that stands out for me in this episode is the, the Autobots. They will not fight in the city while there's humans in it. Uh, they spend their time evacuating the the humans before they'll commence firing on the Insecticons. And that's a big thing that I kind of personally felt was missing from the live-action movies. I mean, it looks good. Chicago, that first movie, I have very few problems with it. But they, I found it kind of strange that Optimus Prime and Megatron were fighting in the city. There's a point where Prime gets thrown against the building well he kind of like gets thrown into the building and he falls out into the street and there's these people all around him whenever I was watching that there maybe it's just the the Eddie's kid and me that remembers this episode and I'm kind of thinking Prime wouldn't have let that fight happen with the humans still there but anyway I digress this um, episode is great the uh, the fight between the Autobots and the Insecticons is very good in this episode but uh, um, oh and another thing the Protectobots are in this episode they're the ones that evacuate the city for the Autobots and this was their introduction to the series but there's no big fanfare for them they just turn up they do their thing um, so Autobots fighting Insecticons uh, we cut over to the Autobot base and Perceptor's there Spike is with them uh, they're looking at the, the screen and 
Teletran 1 and they're looking at into the stars and Spike he's mentioned this shooting star and he's like no I wonder what would happen if an actual real star were to shoot under the earth one day but Perceptor reassures him and saying that you know the ch- the odds of an actual star colliding with the earth are very slim we cut back up into space at this stage uh, Starscream comes across Shockwave who when he lost the fight with the Combaticons he was jettisoned into space essentially so he's floating in space meets Starscream tells him what's happening Cybertron's been invaded and him and Starscream head back to Cybertron um, at Shockwave's base on Cybertron Brawl, one of the Combaticons, he's itching for a fight and uh, blast off. Tells him to, you know, calm yourself. Onslaught's sure to have a plan here. Um, we do cut to Onslaught, who is reconfiguring the space bridge. And his idea is to use the space bridge technology to alter the, the trajectory of the Earth take it out of orbit and send it under the sun killing Megatron and everything else on it they just want they're flat out for revenge against Megatron to skip back to the prior episode their personality components were removed from their original bodies probably millions of years ago and they were kept in this prison cell which is actually just a room with these like you know filing cabinets more or less and just these wee energy cubes inside it which were the personality components so they're out you know, they were renegades in the day, rebelled against the Decepticons, and Megatron destroyed their bodies, put them into these things, and then, of course, in the prior episode, Starscream's Brigade, he liberated them. So they're flat out going for revenge against Megatron and Starscream at this point, because Starscream didn't follow them on this crusade. Um, back on the Earth, uh, the fight has commenced Autobots against the Insecticons um, but uh, before the the Autobots well they're driving the Insecticons out but they don't actually finish the fight before that happens Spike and Perceptor arrive and Paraglide he's dropped them off and uh, they have learned what's happening here the Durfs altered orbit and they inform prime of the peril so the Autobots head towards the space bridge to see what they can do to stop this of course Megatron he's already there and then one of the the Insecticons Shrapnel he destroys the controls to the space bridge I mean just they they eat metal and pretty much everything so he like just bites the control panel off the 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 whole control deck of the space bridge and clears off of it um yeah so this is one of these episodes that i really like and shows like this here now you've got good versus evil and two massive leaders battling each other and every once in a while something will happen that they have to come together and work for the greater good and this is one of them so the autobots they disappear off to try and track down this control panel to the space bridge nothing they can do today get that back and uh megatron works this out soon after um he's already been contacted by starscream to tell him that you know if you don't give up leadership of the decepticons i'll allow this to happen when he got to Cybertron, he worked out what the Combaticons had done, but he's he's happy enough for this plan to play through because it's going to take Megatron out of the equation, leaving him and his mind to be the last man standing, essentially. But the Combaticons do turn on him and Shockwave and imprison them on Cybertron. Back on Earth, the Autobots managed to track down the control panel with the Insecticons they disappear off as Megatron and a few of the other Decepticons turn up and at this point the the protective bots and the rest of the Autobots they're doing their hardest to protect Earth 
the closer it's getting to the sun, of course, the temperatures are rising, so there's wildfires breaking out everywhere. Uh, they're trying to get people into meat lockers, you name it, anything to keep people safe from the rising temperatures and whatnot. River beds are drying up, you know, the whole nine yards is happening at this point. So after a bit of back and forth, um, the Autobots and Decepticons decide to work together, but the the control panel is that chewed up by the Insecticons. The Perceptor reckons he can't get it working again. He's going to need some spare parts for it. So Prime offers to allow him to take some of Prime's own components to repair it on the condition that Megatron do the same. So it's uh, Spike actually steps in at this point and says uh, the Megatron, well, Megatron refuses to do it like he's an I'm autonomic perfection. And Spike jumps up and says, you'll be evaporated perfection if we don't get the Cybertron stop Starscream. And then Megatron comes out with one of these threats that just whenever you think about it, that's pretty damn dark for an 80s cartoon. And, uh, you know, the, the, the cartoons these days doesn't go to the places that the 80s cartoons went to. And this does go to it. Uh, Frost is standing there. I think it was Frost. One of the the seekers in Megatron's army, and he tells him that if Spike does anything suspicious, to shatter his lenses from the inside. So there's a mental image for you. Lenses being his eyes, of course. So they donate their parts. They get the space bridge working. Um, they go to Cybertron for a final confrontation with Bruticus and Starscream. That's what they're thinking at this stage. And, uh, yes, up there on Cybertron, uh, Starscream and Shock, we have already tried to, you know, get one over on the Combaticons by using this, uh, technology that he was using at the beginning of the episode for the, the, the Sentinels to practice with is a hologram projector essentially projects all these different images in the space and they were taking out you know their their target practice on it so they use the same technology to throw the Combaticons off they think there's an invasion coming in where it's just these holograms but uh, they get the upper hand in prison Starscream and Shockwave and the Autobots turn up in the real fight then commences Megatron lets Starscream out of his prison cell along with Shockwave and of course Starscream's trying to uh, say that the Combaticons forced him to threaten Megatron and uh, Megatron is like you know, help us preserve the earth and I might preserve you uh, I love some of the threats that he hands out in the series so uh Starscream come towards the end of the episode he reveals that there is a fail safe mechanism for Bruticus. Uh he thought when he created them that they might rebel, so he built this thing in as a safety. There's three spots on his back and if he hit all three of them he'll be switched off essentially and uh Prime runs out, lifts his gun, shoots Bruticus in the back, these three dots and Bruticus as disabled, knocked out of the game, and just at that, Perceptor and the rest of the Autobots manage to get to the control panel of the space bridge on Cybertron and change the trajectory of the Earth, saving everybody on it, as well as the Autobot and Decepticon armies. So at the end of the episode there, you've got a little moment there where they're saying their goodbyes, more or less, the Autobots are heading back to Earth and they're kind of confused about... You know, why did Megatron let us go without even you know, giving us a blast for goodbye? And Prime is like, you know, no matter what Megatron's evil motives have, are, you have to admit, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have an Earth to return to. Uh, so they enter the space bridge, off they go. And at the end of the episode, we discover that, oh, I left out an important part. Just prior to this, um, Megatron and Optimus Prime agree that Bruticus is too dangerous to be left alive, essentially. So now that he's deactivated, uh, two of the jets 
I believe it was maybe Frost and Ramjet. Uh, you know, they throw out these cables and lift Bruticus up in to the air and Megatron uses his fusion cannon to blast Bruticus to pieces so after the, the Autobots have left and whatnot, we have a moment where we see the deactivated body of Bruticus lying on Cybertron and uh, Megatron congratulating Starscream on a great plan to save Bruticus for themselves and you know, once you may return Megatron says to Starscream you may return to Earth as my subordinate so he's as far as everything has happened in the last two episodes up to this point Starscream's proven himself to be a worthy uh, member of the army again there's a lot of reasons why Megatron should just take him out and be done with but um, yeah that's another video for another time but uh, yes Megatron at the end of the episode says once we reprogram Bruticus to obey only me we will be unstoppable and he does that maniacal laugh and the episode closes out I absolutely adore this episode it's so good as I say it's one of these episodes where um, the good guy <coughs> as far as the leaders go good and evil good versus evil the two leaders have to come together and work as one to achieve a goal love that not just in the Transformers that happens for different shows over the years as well it's just uh, a little uh, storyline that I enjoy no matter where it comes from so uh, great great episode plus this is one of the ones that one of the very few Transformers stories that I actually had in VHS as a kid <coughs> there was no big box sets back then if there was we didn't see any of them in Northern Ireland um, but uh, yeah absolutely love this episode so it's a great great episode for anybody it's probably well at this point we're talking about a cartoon that came out and when was this released this episode came out in 1986 so mess load of time ago but you know kids these days you know as much as some of the newer shows are are great um there's something about generation one that's just timeless for me now so having said that there's probably because i was a child when it came out and have a lot of love for it but uh there's just some aspects to this show that just absolutely fantastic and if you haven't seen anything from generation one at this point and chances if you're watching this video chances are you probably have but if you're one of these people that hasn't seen it and it's, it's not unheard of you know it's only been a few years that ago that I actually had to sit down with a friend of mine and actually uh, let him watch the original Star Wars trilogy man's in his 40s never seen it so uh, yeah there are people out there that haven't seen some shows but I digress again but absolutely fantastic if you're new to generation 1 this is a great episode to jump into um, yeah class that's going to do it guys hope you enjoyed it let me know in the comments below if you're listening to this in the podcast uh your legends no matter where you're watching or listening and i will talk to you in the next episode